This is Europe. It's a big place. In fact, it's home to 44 out of the 195 UN recognized countries. And with all these countries, it's easy to forget a few. We may all have heard of France, Italy, and Spain, but I'm sure some of you viewers might not have heard of countries like Liechtenstein or the mountain nation of Andorra. This is because these are tiny microstates, and there are six of them in Europe. Welcome back to Revelation Learning, and today we look at the microstates of Europe. Firstly, what exactly is a microstate? A microstate is a sovereign country with a very small land area, and although there is no exact measure of how small very small is, it's widely accepted that in Europe there are six. These are Andorra, Monaco, Liechtenstein, San Marino, Vatican City, and Malta. Let's have a look at these countries one by one, starting with Andorra. Andorra is a landlocked country in the Pyrenees, situated between France and Spain, two of the major powerhouses of Europe that are known for conquering a lot of things. It would be easy to think that one of them would have perhaps taken over Andorra by now, but I'll explain why neither actually have. Back in 1278, the countries of France and Aragon, which is now part of Spain, came together to make a buffer state between the county of Foix in France and the county of Urgell in Aragon. This is because there was a French and Aragon joint estate protecting the Bishop of Urgell, which was a problem because the territories of these two different countries were essentially under the control of one estate. There was an agreement made that the land belonging to the Catholic Church in the county of Urgell would become its own separate country between France and Aragon, but that would be under joint rule between the Count of Urgell and the Count of Foix. To this day, the land known as Andorra is still an independent country, and its 77,000 people speak mostly Catalan, which 60% of the population said to have Spanish too. They use the euro as their currency, and their capital city is Andorra la Vella. This is the flag of Andorra. The colours of red and blue represent independence from France, as both of those colours are on the French flag, and the yellow along with the red again represents independence from Spain, as those colours can be seen on the Spanish flag. Andorra is 468 square kilometres, making it the largest microstate in Europe. Next, if we take a trip east through France, we arrive in Monaco. Monaco is surrounded by France on the north, east and west, and the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Again, it's easy to think that France would have taken Monaco by now, but in the year 1861, Monaco's independence was guaranteed by the French in exchange for two towns that were under Monacan rule. 38,000 people live in the country, but it's only 2 kilometers squared in size, making this French-speaking nation the most densely populated country on earth. It is said that 1 in 3 Monegasque people are millionaires, and this makes them the richest country per capita on earth. Monaco used the euro as their currency, and make a good amount of their national earnings in the Monte Carlo Casino. There is no casino more famous or more grand on earth. The lax tax laws of Monaco also attract the wealthy in their hundreds, as they can save millions by making their money here. The nation's flag consists of red and white, which are said to represent human flesh and purity. Next, if we take a journey up north, we arrive in the small German-speaking country of Liechtenstein. This country was formed when two provinces of the Holy Roman Empire, those being Vaduz and Schellenberg, were united. Vaduz is still the capital of this mountainous nation today. Although surrounded by both Austria and Switzerland, they take more after Switzerland, as they use their currency, this being the Swiss franc, and unless agreed otherwise, Switzerland represents Liechtenstein at international events. Liechtenstein may not be as rich as Monaco, but is still the second richest country on earth, and takes up 160 kilometers squares in size. The population of 38,000 people that live here are known as Liechtensteiners, and they are proud to be separate from their other neighbours in the Alps. Taking a trip south into Italy, we can see two small landlocked countries, San Marino and the Vatican City. Let's start by taking a look at San Marino. San Marino was formed by St. Marinus in the year 301. St. Marinus was originally from the island of Rab, off the coast of Croatia. At the time, the Christians were being killed there, so St. Marinus escaped to a beach in Italy and started a new life there. An Italian lady then claimed that St. Marinus was the father of her child, so again, he ran into the mountains to start another new life and built a monastery. Over time, others who are said to have been in similar situations 
joined him in his mountain monastery. The owner of the land that they were residing on had a sick son, and it is said that St. Marinus healed him and was granted the land as a thank you, forming the country of San Marino, named after himself. The people of San Marino speak Italian, use the euro as currency, and the country is a mere 61 km squared in size. This flag is made of both blue and white and originates from a coat of arms dated back to the 14th century. San Marino is the oldest republic still in existence and has the world's oldest constitution. If we take a trip south through Italy, we find another landlocked country and the smallest nation on earth, the Vatican City. This country takes up only half a kilometre squared. The Pope, the head of the Catholic Church, resides in the Vatican, meaning that there is, on average, two popes per square kilometre in the Vatican City, even though there is only one pope on earth. Italian is the language of the Vatican, and again, the euro is the currency there. The country is home to only around 800 people. The Vatican is the last remaining part of a once huge country taking up half the size of Italy. This country was known as the Papal States. The Papal States were ruled by whoever the current Pope was, and in 1870 they were taken over by Italy, except for the little enclave of the Vatican City that the Pope lived in, as no one wants to make the Pope mad, right? So in 1929, Mussolini recognised the Vatican as a sovereign nation. This is the flag of the Vatican. The yellow and white represent the earlier Papal States, and the keys symbolise the keys mentioned in the New Testament of the Bible, giving Peter access to the gates of heaven. The last country we look at today is Malta. Malta was once a British colony, so they speak English and also Maltese. Unlike Britain, they do use the Euro though, and are part of the European Union. Malta's 494,000 people live mostly on two main islands, and the country's area is 316 kilometers squared, making it the second biggest microstate, with its capital being Valletta. Malta became independent from the British in 1964, and have been a sovereign country ever since. An interesting side note is that Malta is the most overrepresented country in European Parliament. This is because the 494,000 people of Malta have six representatives, or one for every 82,000 people, while on the other side of the scale, Germany has one representative for every 864,000 people. This is the flag of Malta, and although the colours may have many inspirations, the cross on the top left hand side is the cross of King George. And there we have it. These are the six microstates of Europe, briefly summarised. Hopefully this video has given you a better insight into these countries, countries you might not have known existed. If you've enjoyed this topic, you might like to check out my other videos. Thanks so much for watching. If you've learned something new, be sure to show some support. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. If you've enjoyed, be sure to share this video with a friend. This has been Revelation Learning, and I hope you have a great day.